chapter, we have uh, considered uh, construction of PCs, the principal components, which are in fact very special type of linear combinations of the original variables. We said that we are going to check the properties that we had stated in the very beginning, the desirable properties of the principal components. The first one of them was that the total variability present in the original data should be equal to the total variability in the principal components. So, let us start with our first property today, that is property 1. We have total variation of y, that is of the principal components, is equal to total variation of x. Now, at this point, we are still talking about the p dimensional uh, vector of principal components. We have considered as many uh, elements of this uh, principle uh, of, uh, or we have considered as many principal components as there are the original variables. And we have also defined total variation as the sum of the diagonal elements of the corresponding of, uh, variance covariance matrix. So, let us say that I have total variation of y. What is this? By my definition of total variation of y, it should be the trace of the variance covariance matrix of y. Now, we know that this is nothing but trace of okay, trace of the variance covariance matrix of y. And what is y? Well, y is nothing but you know that y is we have cons constructed the principal components in this way. y is the linear combination, the first linear combination E 1 x, y 2 is E 2 x and similarly y p is nothing but E p x. So, this is in fact, if I want to write the y vector, I can actually represent the whole thing. This is my y vector, the collection of these y 1, y 2 to y p in the column form and I have this as e 1, e 2 to e p, all these are transpose and I have this as x. So, this is, if you recall that this is nothing but our p transpose matrix, because this the p matrix is formed, the, the columns of the p matrix uh, uh, are nothing but the orthonormal eigenvectors e 1, e 2, 2, e p. So, this is nothing but p x, which also gives me equivalently that x is equal to p y, but I can handle the situation with this relation. So, this is trace of nothing but covariance of p transpose x. Why do I do this? Because I know what is the variance covariance matrix of x and trace of covariance of this matrix is trace of p transpose sigma p, because I have assumed, I have taken that sigma is the variance covariance matrix of the random variables x and now I use the spectral decomposition of sigma in terms of p d lambda. So, this is p d lambda p prime. We know what are these matrices already and since p is an orthogonal matrix, its columns are made up of orthonormal eigenvectors. This is nothing but trace of d lambda and trace of d lambda is nothing but sum of lambda i's. This is i from 1 to p. And what is total variation of x? Well, total variation of x is total variation represented by the original data that is x. Well, by definition it is trace of the covariance matrix of x, which is tra trace of sigma and trace of sigma is nothing but trace of p d lambda p prime. I am again using the spectral decomposition of sigma and I am using the fact that trace of a b is trace of b a. So, this is nothing but trace of d lambda p prime p. Now, p prime p being an identity matrix, I will have to consider only trace of d lambda 
and which is again equal to sum of lambda i, i from 1 to p giving me the property, proof of the first property that total variation of y is in fact equal to total variation of x. The next one was we said that the principal components y 1, y 2 to y p, they should be uncorrelated. So, let us say this, the principal components so constructed, they are bound to be uncorrelated. So, we have y 1, y 2 to y p are uncorrelated. We combine one more thing with this, with variance of y i, the ith principal component is the ith largest eigenvalue of the covariance matrix of x. Okay. So, we have y 1, y 2 to y p are uncorrelated with variance of with variance of y i being lambda i. This is again very simple because we have the ith principal component y i is nothing but E i transpose x and this is true for all i from 1 to p. So, that if I really have to consider what is covariance between y i and y j, well it is nothing but covariance between E i prime x and E j prime x. So, this is in fact E i prime covariance of x and E j prime and this covariance x is nothing but our sigma matrix, the matrix which is very important to us for calculation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors and we use the spectral decomposed representation of this matrix to write E i prime with P d lambda P transpose and E j, right. Where the columns of P matrix, these are nothing but E 1, E 2 to E p. Once I realize this, I can also realize very quickly that well, if I write this as E i transpose and here I have E 1, E 2 to E p, then I have a d lambda and here I have transpose of this that is E 1 transpose to E p transpose and E j here. Now, since E i's are orthonormal eigenvectors, I am only going to have a 1 in the ith position when this E i transpose combines with the E i here. So, that 1 in the ith position and 0 elsewhere d lambda and then again I have, now this is important because this is in the ith position whereas this is in the jth position. So, they are never matching and I am as a result I have a 0, this is jth and as a result I have 0 if, well if i is not equal to j and well if it is equal to i is equal to j. So, 1 is going to match with 1 here and resultant element that is going to remain is this ith element of d lambda and that is going to be lambda i if i is equal to j. So, in one go I can prove, I have been able to prove that this not proves that covariance of which implies that covariance of y i y j is 0 for all i not equal to j and variance of y i which is covariance between y i and y with itself this is equal to lambda i. Okay. The next property that we talk of is property 3. Well, we know covariance between x i x j is sigma i j, the i j th element of the sigma matrix. We have constructed multiple components in such a way, so that the covariance between y i and y j that is the covariance between the ith principal component and the jth principal component is 0, they are uncorrelated. Now, what about covariance between the original variable and principal component? Say I consider covariance between x i, any x i and not just the y i, but say any y j. So, let us look into that because this relation, this covariance or this correlation coefficient that I am going to obtain from here is going to help me a lot in data interpretation. Okay. 
So, this is the next property that we are talking of that is covariance between x i that is the ith original variable and the jth principal component y j is e i j root of lambda i by sigma i i. Now, I know what is lambda i, it is the variance of the ith principal component and uh, sigma i i is the variance of the original variable x, but what is e i j, where e i j is the jth, sorry the ith element of the jth eigenvector that is e j. Right? This lambda is lambda j not i because I am considering y j here. So, this is lambda j variance of y j, this is sigma i i variance of x i and e i j is coming from the jth eigenvector e j, it is the ith element of that eigenvector. Okay. So, our again we start from the form of the principal component y j, let us try to express it in terms of x, then we are able to use the no known results and y j is nothing but e j transpose x. Okay. This is true for all j from 1 to p. And then I have to consider, so well I know y is again y 1 to y p and these are nothing but e 1 x to e p x. Right? So, this is nothing but e 1 transpose to e p transpose combined with x and this is p transpose x. So, I have y is nothing but p transpose x, p being orthogonal I have x is equal to p y. And then if I have to consider, well x is just like y, it is also p dimensional, I have x 1, x 2 to x p and I simply have the p matrix here. If you recall the p matrix is nothing but e 1, e 2 to e p and now I am saying that I am denoting the ith element of the jth eigenvector by e i j. So, I can open up these all these vectors, right. So, for E 1, if I have to write the first element of the first eigenvector, I will write E 1 1, then the second element of the second, this column vector, I am going to write E 2 1. So, this is exactly how I write a matrix P, if P is nothing but and then P is nothing but represented by this E i j and I have E 1 1 e 2 1 in this way up to e p 1 and finally, the first element of the p th vector, p th eigen vector which is e 1 p, then the second element of e p which is e 2 p and then I have the last element or the p th element of the p th vector giving me e p p and then this is y 1 to y p. Right. So, this gives me a new representation of x, I can say that x i, if I consider the ith element of the x vector, it is nothing but sum of e i k y k and k the sum is over that common dimension obviously, it is p. So, now if I have to consider covariance between x i and y j, well I will have to consider covariance between x i, I am using this form of x i, this is sum over i and for y j, I am simply taking y j. Now, I can do this because I know what already what is the covariance between covariance between any y k and y j. So, it is okay, simple for me to handle this. Now, I know that covariance between any y k and y j where k is not equal to j is equal to 0. So, if I open up this sum and consider the covariance with y j, the only term that will make a difference in the in this covariance will make a contribution rather in this difference is the pth term. That is when y p comes, 
with the coefficient eip others are all equal to 0 because i am considering covariance between yk and yj and k is not equal to i so this is basically nothing but covariance between e i j y j and then sorry this is going to give me yeah so this is going to give me covariance between e i j and e i k that's the only part that that is going to remain and i have e i j with y j and y j rest of these are not making any contribution and covariance between y j and y j is of course lambda j and e i j remains as such giving me e i j lambda j because I know that covariance between y k and y j is 0 for all k not equal to j and is lambda j if k is equal to j. So, I am using this relationship and then I have I can also consider the correlation coefficient, correlation coefficient between x i and y j. This is covariance x i y j by root variance of x i times root variance of y j. I know all these. So, I can immediately write this as e i j lambda j and this is root of sigma i i and this is root of lambda j. So, this is giving me e i j with root lambda j by sigma i i. Let us go back to the statement. Yeah, we had stated that now we have to make a small correction again here. This is not actually the covariance, but in fact the correlation coefficient. The covariance being equal to e i j lambda j. So, if I consider the correlation coefficient between x i and y j, then only I get this full thing. Okay. So, from here it is clear that this element e i j, it plays a very significant role in the correlation coefficient between x i and y j, right? because its sign is, is going to determine the sign of the correlation coefficient. I have the rest of it is ratio of two standard deviations always positive. So, its sign as well as its magnitude are very important for me to interpret the relationship between the original variables and the principal components. Yes, there are some more parameters which can be now checked from whatever we have obtained and let us list down a few important of those parameters which are very important which are very useful for data interpretation part. The first one is I have say we can note down these as some remarks or some notes. Okay. So, the first one is the one that we have just done that is E i j that is the ith element of the jth eigenvector, this is proportional to correlation coefficient between x i and y j and so the magnitude of e i j and sine also of e i j indicate how important is x i to y j and this helps in interpreting because after all these principal components that we have constructed, these are not some direct observable variables, these are linear combinations of a number of several variables. So, to give we have to give some interpretation in terms of the physical variables and if we have a certain relationship like this, it becomes a little easier for us to give the interpretation as to how these are related. Okay? So, this helps in interpreting y j. The second one is the proportion 
Now, if you recall, we have not talked about one more property of the principal components, which we said is very important. That is, though the total variation in x is equal to total variation in y, ultimately to make the whole exercise a fruitful one, I should have the total variation in y, it should be explained by a very few number of variables. To a total variation of a fewer number of the principal components. That is, you had recall we had written something like total variation in y is approximately equal to the variation in y1, y2 to yk, where k is a number which is much smaller than the true dimension p. Now, that we have not checked because that is that is going to come out from actual data. Only when we have data, we can actually see that how this, what is the effect or what is the extent to which this has been, uh, this approximation is effective. Okay? But before that, I can also say that the proportion of total var variability or proportion of total, va total variation in x explained by the kth principal component. Right? What is the total variation in x? It is sum of some the eigenvalues and the variation explained by the kth principal component is nothing but its variance and that is equal to lambda k. So, this the proportion of total variation in x explained by the kth p c y k is equal to lambda k by sum of lambda i, i from 1 to p. And what do we want? Ideally, we would like to have this lambda 1 by summation lambda k a very large number. This should be as close to 1 as possible. Then should come lambda 2 by sum of lambda i's and in this way. As the value of k increases, we would like to have this factor to be smaller and smaller, so that I can stop at a small value of k and say that if I consider these, these many principal components, it is good enough for me to explain the total variability present in the data. Okay. Then again, it is not necessary that I have to consider the principal component in isolation that I, I should say that 1 explains the, the highest variability, so I stop at 1. No, I can consider 1 and 2, 2 dimensional is also good enough for me. So, in that case, I have to look at the total variability explained by the first principal component and the second principal component. So, in this way, that is another one more parameter that is of importance to me is proportion of total variation in x explained by the first k principal components that is that is sum of lambda i i from 1 to k and this is the total variation sum of lambda i, i from 1 to p, all of them. Okay. And then comes the important point that if I have sum of lambda i, i from 1 to k is approximately equal to sum of lambda i, i from 1 to p, then I will say and that too for some small k, smaller the better for some small k, then it is enough to consider the first k principal components and the data dimension and the data dimension can be reduced to k. That was our goal, primary goal the data dimension can be reduced as we consider a part of y that is as we consider now the k dimensional vector y 1, y 2, 2, y k, k is much smaller than p. 
Okay. Now, one thing is we have to be careful about, so this is number 4 after the first 3 points. One thing we have to be careful about, we are saying that E i j is a very important factor for me to explain the importance, the association between x i and y j. Now, if I have the data, E i j is essentially the ith element of the jth eigenvector. Now, if I have the data which are in different units of measurement or data which have very uh, different and very wide ranges of variation, then if I consider the data as it is and then focus on these EIJs and other measures, then the comparison would not be truly correct. What we have to do in such a situation is we have to try and make the measurements unit free and so that we get the the true picture of association. Okay. So, this point also to be noted down before we actually do the exercise of that so, standardizing the variables. So, in case of in case the units of variables units of measurements of the variables. So, the units of variables are different or the variables which is bound to happen in practical situations. We shall, we shall consider variables from different fields, which, will are, which are bound to have different um, units of measurement and they can also have a totally different and very high range of variation. So, this we should uh, and or the variables have widely varying ranges. we should obtain principal components from the standardized variables. So, standardizing the variables means essentially we will have to divide the, we have to first take the difference of these variables from the corresponding means and divide by the corresponding standard deviations. Now, initially when we working with the plane, the raw data, our the matrix of importance to us was the variance covariance matrix of x, that is the sigma matrix. Now, you can easily realize that if we standardize the variables, the whole matrix of importance to us is now the correlation coefficient matrix of the variables. Okay. So, now we have to the every everything is getting replaced by the correlation coefficient matrix rho, uh, which in which work um, initially where we worked with the sigma, the covariance matrix uh, sigma. Now, our matrix of importance is the correlation coefficient matrix rho. So, this is obtained from standardized variables and we have to consider the that is work can put it like this work with the correlation matrix instead of the covariance matrix. Now, question remains that uh, will the principal components be same if we work with the sigma uh, on the row ma uh, matrices? The answer is no. In general, the PCs derived from sigma and rho are different, right. And now we consider calculation of principal components from the correlation matrix. So, I have principal components derived from correlation matrix we really don't have do not have to do much here we'll see that how a simple transformation helps us and we'll get all the results immediately from the ones that we have already proved okay so first is we consider the standardized variables that's the first step
and use a very general notation z for those. So, I say that z i is nothing but x i minus mu i that is the mean of the ith random variable. We had earlier said that the mean vector well, if you have to write the covariance, the term for covariance with in terms of expectation etcetera, we will have to use this mu, mu being the mean vector mu 1 to mu p. Right. So, we have and sigma the variance covariance matrix is sigma i j. Right. So, this is x i minus mu i by root over sigma i i for all i from 1 to p there are p variables x 1 to x p, I define p standardized variables z 1 to z p and now I just define a new matrix v, define v which is nothing but diagonal of the sigma mat, diagonal elements of the sigma matrix. So, this is diagonal sigma 1 1 2 sigma p p right and then well, I have z, how can I write this z vector? z vector is nothing but z 1 to z p, right. In terms of the x vector, if I have to do it, well simply, it is simply that now that I have defined what is v and the diagonal elements are all positive. So, v is a positive definite matrix, I consider the inverse square root of v by its spectral decomposition by actually by spectral decomposition of sigma, this is good enough to give me this also v uh, square root inverse of v and then rest of it is nothing but x minus mu. So, I combine all these standardized variables in this z vector in this fashion using x's, mu's and these elements sigma i i root sigma i i coming into the picture in this way. So, now that I have z is this. So, what is expectation z as expected because I have standardized these and got z. So, this is nothing but the null vector because expectation x is mu and what is covariance variance covariance matrix of z. Well, this is v minus half covariance of x minus mu which is same as covariance of x which is sigma and then this is v minus half again. And what is that? Well, if sigma is the variance covariance matrix or the dispersion matrix of something of x right and you have these are getting getting divided by these the i jth element of sigma matrix what well, by what is it getting divided? Well, it is getting divided by this the element here that is it is getting multiplied here by sigma i i raised to the power minus half and on the other side it is sigma j j raised to the power minus half. So, in effect I am getting nothing but the correlation coefficients rho of x i j. Right. So, rho is nothing but rho i j and what is rho i j? It is the correlation coefficient matrix of x i j. Call this as rho i j, the matrix of correlation of x i and x j. Well, this was the matrix of covariance between x i and x j. So, you may write it x i x j as a subscript, but there is no need actually. Just like we have sigma as covariance between x i i j and rho is the correlation matrix between x i and x j. And then if I consider the eigenvalue and orthonormal eigenvector that is I say there I had lambda i e i here let me have eta i and f i i from 1 to p the same way as we had considered the lambdas I have lambda eta 1 greater than equal to up to eta p be the eigenvalue and orthonormal eigenvector 
pairs of rho no instead of sigma I had earlier lambda i and e i eigenvalue eigenvector pair of sigma I do not calculate the eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors for sigma now instead I calculate it for the correlation matrix rho and then I get this is pairs of rho matrix then then what is the ith principal component? Let me use the same notation y i for I principal component and then what is the ith principal component? Well, originally if you recall I had y i is e i times x, e i transpose x. Then now using these notations I should have this as f i transpose z, right? And this is nothing but f i transpose v inverse x minus mu. So, this is the ith principal component calculated from rho, right. And if I have to consider the variance of this, well, I consider the variance of some of the variance, the first one, the first point to be noted is this and then I have the total variation variation in y that is sum of variance of y i from 1 to p, there are p of them as before and then this is nothing but because I had variance of y i equal to variance of x i. So, similarly I should have this variance of y i, these new y i's their variance, sum of their variances should be equal to variances of z i, i from 1 to p and what is this? what is this matrix? Actually, this is giving me the correlation coefficient matrix and then what are the diagonal elements? The diagonal elements are 1. So, some of them are actually equal to p. So, sigma everywhere sigma replaced by rho. Trace of sigma, now I have trace of rho which is equal to p. Right? And another point that to be noted is what is the covariance between y j and z i as we had considered y j and x i. Well, there it was e i j if you recall it was e i j lambda j by sigma i i. So, here it is going to be f i j f i j right with lambda j is now being replaced by eta j and sigma i i is now actually equal to 1 because I am considering the rho matrix instead of the sigma matrix. Okay. So, we will continue with the calculation from a data, calculation of principal components from data after this. Now, we consider the computational steps required for the calculation of the principal components. First, we consider a situation where we are calculating eigenvalue eigenvectors from the from the sigma matrix that is the covariance matrix and next we will take up a correlation matrix as well. So, the first example that we consider here this is the computational steps for calculation of PCs. And calculation of construction of pieces. Now, now that we know the theory behind this, we ca we actually know that the 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 important information, the important data that we require is nothing but the variance covariance matrix of the original variable sigma. Okay, so from here we can calculate the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and the principal components also. So, that is what mattered, that is what matters to me and then I have the first example say the example 1 where I have the sigma matrix given to me as 1 minus 2 0 5 0 2. It is a symmetric matrix. So, obviously, I know that the data dimension is 3. I have a 3 by 3 square matrix which is symmetric and which is positive definite also. Right. So, I calculate eigenvalues from here, the three eigenvalues and I denote them as the, the first one is the highest one in this way. So, I calculate the three eigenvalues and then I put them as lambda 1 is equal to 5.83, lambda 2 the second 
1 in magnitude is 2 and lambda 3 is 0.17. All positive in decreasing order 5.83, 2 and 0.17. I have to consider the corresponding, calculate the corresponding orthonormal eigenvectors. First, I get the eigenvectors and then orthonormalize them to get the orthonormal eigenvectors and these are E1 is the eigenvector, the orthonormal eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1 equal to 5.83 is this one. It is 0.383 minus 0.924 and then 0. The second orthonormal eigenvector that is the eigenvector corresponding to the second highest eigenvalue which is equal to 2. This is equal to 0, 0. 1 and E 3 similarly is 0 0.924, 0 0.383 and 0. If I know this, I know all the three pieces. The pieces are, well the first one is Y 1, it is E 1 transpose x. So, I know what is, what are the coefficients with each of the x variables for the y1 for the first principal component. So, that is 0 0.383 x1 minus 0 0.924 x2. That is all because the third coefficient is 0. The second principal component is identically equal to the third variable, the original variable x3 and the third principal component is 0 0.924 plus so it is x 1 plus 0.383 x 1 sorry x 2 that is the third principal component. And if that is so, I am going to now see that how important these principal components are, how much of the total variation they can explain. So, this is the, 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 the few characteristics that we have talked about. So, the first one is the first PC explains how much well it will be lambda 1 which is 5.83 by that is the trace the total variation that is sum of the lambda i's which is equal to 8 and if I say that is this percentage in percentage this gives me 73 percent of total variation. One may not be happy with only 73 percent of the total variation being explained by one PC. So, I may not say that I am going to reduce the dimension to 1. Let us see if I consider the second PC, the second PC or you can say the first and the second PCs together explain. Well, this is going to be lambda 1 plus lambda 2 that is 5.83 plus 2 by 8 times 100 percent and this is equal to 98 percent of total variation. So, this tells me that I can reduce the data dimension from 3 to 2 because I see that the first two principal components, they are explaining 98 percent of the total variation and this the, the reduction of dimension by even one degree helps me a lot. I can project this data on an x y plane and I can see various characteristics of this multivariate data. right? And what about the correlation coefficient? I have rho of x i y k. This is if you recall we had used a notation y j and this was e i j and I have root of lambda j by sigma i i. So, that I have rho of x 1 with y 1 is 0.383 that is I am considering e i j, I am considering the jth eigenvector that is the first eigenvector and the first element of that that is 0.583 and I consider the 
the first eigenvalue because j is equal to 1. So, that is 5.83 and variance of the first that is the first element of the sigma matrix and this is equal to 0 0.925. This tells me about the relative importance between x 1 and y 1. Similarly, if I consider x 2 and y 1, what I get is that is j remains 1 here, but i is 2. So, I have the first eigenvector, but the second element from it and that is minus 0 0.924, the first eigenvalue and the second element, second diagonal element of the sigma matrix giving me 5 and that is equal to minus 0 0.998. I can see that there is a direct relationship between x 1 and y 1, the first variable and the first principal component, whereas there is a negative relationship between x 2 and y 1, but nevertheless the importances are really high. They are high in magnitude, one is 0 0.925, another is minus 0 0.998. What about the third one x 3 with y 1? Well, we have to consider the third element of the first eigenvector and that is equal to 0. So, there is no degree of association between the first principal component and the third original variable. Okay. So, in this way we can if we want to go to the second principal component, if we stop at the first principal component, we need not go to the correlation coefficient between the x j's, x i's and y 2, but if we want to retain y 2, we should ideally because only when the first two are combined, we have 98 percent of variability explained and then one can also cal uh, consider the calculate the correlations between x days, the different x days with y 2. Let us take up the second example and here we work with the, we will take a smaller matrix and work with both the dispersion as well as the correlation matrix. So, here first take consider this is case A, I have sigma is equal to 1, 4, 4 and 100 that is my variance covariance matrix and my correlation coefficient matrix, well, we can write it later on when we consider case B. And what we have from here is uh, are the eigenvalues from the sigma matrix, I have two eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 and these are 100.16 and 0.84 the corresponding orthonormal eigenvectors are E 1, this is 0 0.04, 0 0.999 0 and E 2 is 0 0.999 minus 0 0.04. So, then I consider Y 1 and Y 2, Y 1 is nothing but I have to consider E 1 prime x, so which is 0 0.04 x 1 plus 0.999 x 2, E 2 is 0.999 x 1, just the reverse relationship and then minus with the negative sign here and minus 0 0.04 x 2, right. So, then y 1 explains how much of the total variability it explains the first eigenvalue lambda 1 by the sum of it, which hardly makes any difference because I have 100.16 and 0 0.84 added to it making this as 101 and this times 100 percent that is approximately equal to 99 percent of the total variability, 99 percent of total variability. and y 2 explains the rest of it. So, no need to consider, no need to go to y 2. If I consider y 2, there is no reduction in the data dimension and if I consider y 2, now this will explain 100 percent, but at least from two dimension, I have come down to one dimension. That is the whole purpose, whether it, it really helps me in data dimension reduction. And then I consider the correlation coefficients also. I have rho x 1 y 1 this is important and this is only the eigenvector, the first eigenvector is coming into the picture. This is the E i j part that is E 1 1 here 
and then I have the variance of the first, the standard deviation of the first eigen of, of the first principal component that is 100.16 by sigma i i, sigma 1 1 that is 1 and this is giving me 0 0.04. 0.4 actually not 0 0.04 and what about the correlation coefficient between y1 and x2? Well, this is now going to be 0 0.99, it is the first eigenvalue 100.16, but now it is the second variance sigma 2 2 and this is equal to 0 0.999. So, this tells me that x 2 is much more important, the degree of association of y 1, the only principal component that we are considering is much higher with the second variable than with the first variable, perfectly ok, there is no problem with that. So, x 2 is much more important to x uh, to y 1 than x 1. Now, how, what is the, the true degree of this importance? Is it because of the, the much higher value of this second variance? So, to look into questions like this, what we should do is actually standardize the variables and work with the correlation coefficient matrix rather than the covariance matrix. Okay? So, that is what we are going to do now. We consider the case B part where we have the correlation coefficient matrix calculated from the covariance matrix just by that defining the v inverse uh, square root inverse of v matrix and then we can easily get the correlation coefficient matrix and that is equal to 1.4 I have and then what is this is 0.4 and 1, right. That is, we are considering the standardized variables, that is the standardized variable z 1 is nothing but x 1 minus mu 1 by sigma 1 1 root of this. And z 2 is nothing but x 2 minus mu 2 by root of sigma 2 2. And then sigma z matrix is actually the rho x matrix, right. This is rho x, but I can also have the sigma z matrix and then this is nothing but this matrix what I am getting here, 1.4.4 and 1, right. And then I calculate the eigenvalues eta 1 and eta 2 from this rho matrix and eta 1 turns out to be 1.4 eta 2 is 0.6, right. And the eigenvectors corresponding orthonormal eigenvectors f 1 prime and f 2 prime also have to be calculated. This is 0 0.707, 0 0.707 and f 2 is 0 0.70. with minus 0 0.707, right. And then we have y 1, let us see that is the first thing that we are going to check y 1 explains, well what is y 1 and y 2 that is trivial, we need not write, but let us write here also, y 1 is nothing but if you want to write in terms of z 1 and z 2, I should write it ideally as 0 0.707 z 1 plus 0 0.707 z 2, these are to be replaced by x 1 and x 2 and y 2 is 0 0.707 z 1 minus 0 0.707 z 2 and y 1 explains and ideally then further you can write this as 0 0.707 x 1 minus mu 1 by the element of the first first element of the sigma matrix that is 1 and you have 0 0.707 x 2 minus mu 2 by second diagonal element that is root 100 and in this way. Okay. So, y 1 explains what percentage of total variability it explains 
its own eigenvalue, its own variance which is 1.4 divided by the total variability which is sum of eta 1 and eta 2 that is 2 times 100 percent and that is equal to 70 percent of total variability. And if I consider y 2 part of it, it explains if the rest of it, right, because y 1 and y 2 will together consider the total variability. Now, that is what we see here, the difference here if you work with the covariance matrix and the correlation matrix. When we had worked with the covariance matrix, we saw that y 1 the principal component calculated from the covariance matrix explained 99 percent of the total variability, but here when we consider the correlation matrix, we see that y 1 explains only about 70 percent of the total variation. And let us look into the correlation coefficient part also, where we have correlation between, if I have to can consider the correlation coefficient of this is rho y 1 with x 1. Well, I have to consider the first element of the first vector of the f vector that is 0 0.707 and then we have to consider the root of the first root of the first eigenvalue calculated from the correlation matrix that is going to be eta 1 which is root of 1.4 and then the variance, the first variance of x 1, this is, well this is actually equal to z 1, right. And the variance here is nothing but 1. We can calculate this to get what is the correlation coefficient and similarly I can have what is correlation coefficient between y 1 and z 2, right. So, this is going to be the, the e i e i j that is I am going to use the first element of the second vector that is again 0 0.707, I will consider root of 4 and 1 here. The interesting thing to see here is that y 1 to z 1 and y 1 to z 2, the degree of association is same because I have the same value coming here because of the fact that E 1 1, right, E 1 1 is equal to e 1 2 and I have the same eta i value coming here and z coming now from the correlation matrix have equal variances which is equal to 1. Okay. So, that is precisely equal row of y 1 z 1 is equal to row of y 1 and z 2. Our next example will be computation of PCs from data matrix. In these examples, what we had seen was that I did not have the data matrix, I, uh, I only had the population variance covariance matrix given to me. That was good enough for me. I calculated the eigenvalues, eigenvectors and then the principal components and I then also talked about how much of the variabilities are getting is getting explained by the principal components and so on and so forth. But in reality, what we are going to have with uh, going to have with us is actually the data, the, the information on the multivariate data variables and we are going to calculate our, we are going to calculate the whole sample covariance uh, matrix from the data and proceed for calculation of eigenvalue and eigenvector from that variance covariance matrix.